Okay, today everybody, we're gonna learn how to convert all the scratch stuff code into Python code simply by using this double-headed arrow. And then you stick around, you'll find out more. Okay, now we're on the desktop here, and we're gonna open this RoboMaster app. And I am gonna show you guys how uh, you guys who might have a RoboMaster or just got one and you can't find any code online too much we're going to show you how you can do all that now what we're going to do is we're going to take the scratch codes and I'm going to show you how you can take them apart and you can actually see the Python code behind them so you can translate it I was going to go on a new page, but see this double-headed arrow? When I go like this, you're going to see all this Python code. Now what you can do is double-head the arrow again if you want. We're going to back out of here and we're going to make a new fresh string so I can show you. Now this by default will automatically be here. And you can only pull it around by going like this. You can pull it around, but you can't get rid of it. Now to translate that, you go like this. And now see how you get your little function? You don't have to type this in, in the app, but you should, I do anyway, just to make the robot just, it runs the same anyway, but I guess they do it their way, so I do it this way, I always use a start function. But that's that for that. Now, if you take a block, for example, and you take something and you don't fit it in the start button, or it can't play by itself, you won't be able to translate it. You'll be like wondering, oh wow, why is that not there? What you do is you take your little black, any one you want. I want to show you before that like you couldn't do that. See, you don't see nothing. Now you, you put it inside the start button or start puzzle block. And then you'll see what's inside here. You can take this command by itself and copy it. And what you have to do is you got to go through the whole entire thing and painstakingly stick these all in the start button or whatever you have here has to go in little circular blocks, translate them all, and see what they all do with the double-headed arrow. The same thing with the ledge, you gotta do the same thing. And then down here, you gotta do the same thing. And if you find any blocks that might have something like this here, this will play this will play by itself. This will just be a function underneath a function. Watch this. See that? It's a function within a function, but this has got an argument inside it. Right here. But this here is actual another function, but you can actually take all this and keep it. Which is also all my videos for uh, the Python examples and Python commands for uh, the RoboMaster. And then we'll go back to the double-headed arrow again. Only these guys that have this kind of shape like this can play by themselves. Anything like I say that looks like this, an inverted puzzle piece, it will not play by itself. We'll just get rid of this one here. I'll show you again. And now when I go like this, see, you'll see that. You'll see that. I gotta take this out, but you don't see nothing else. I'll show you again. You'll see just the start button. See? Now I'll put this little indented puzzle piece back in here. Go like this, and you'll be able to see what that actually is. This is the actual command that makes the gunfire. And you type in the number value here, whichever you want. Like, I think it's up to eight, I believe. That you can uh, fire between one to eight bullets at a time. Uh, little Jelvy bullets. That, other than that, though, this is how I've done it. And you gotta go through all these just to just to turn them all into Python code. And like I said, any blocks that look like this, you have to put them in here. Like I can take this block here. We'll get rid of this. Get rid of this. I don't use Scratch, so I'm not sure. Okay, I can't get rid of that one. That's default. I can get rid of this one. Now what we'll do is we'll keep this one here. And we'll just see if I can actually place a command inside that. Whoops. 
Don't want that yet. I want this. Okay, whoops. Now we're gonna see if this actually works by itself. We're gonna delete that block. Is that one in there? Okay, this this actually does the same thing as start button does. So all these little upward uh, circular arc things here, they're the ones that you have to put these kind of pieces in. Because these pieces will not play by themselves as I showed you. You will not see this command down here. You only see what this is and what that is. And you only see what this is because of this. So we'll take this out and we'll show you again. All you're going to see is these two here. You will not see what goes inside them, see? You only see the two functions that you got there. Now we'll put these guys back in their little places. Doesn't matter which way, you'll still see their commands. See what I mean? That was how I figured it out and, did, and translated all the commands into Python. By, you, by using this little double-headed arrow. This little guy right here. And, and you don't have to turn your Role Master app on either. I don't have my Role Master on. As you can see, my play button is grayed out. I got nothing connected, see? So I can still play with the app. I just can't really save anything. I can save it, but I, the robot won't know it until I turn it on. But other than that, though, this is how you actually have to do everything. I got no sensors I can use other than hit detector, so I don't really use these blocks too much as for Python code. But again, this here will show by itself. We'll take these guys away. Take this guy away. All three of these should show up. And see how they do? All three of them show up. Now, we're going to try another one just to make sure I'm right. We're going to stick just any old block in it. It won't work in, in real life. I'm just sticking anything in just to show you that anything with an upward arc will show content inside it that can't be seen. See? See that? This here is what that is. This little guy right here. That's what that is. Now we'll move it. We'll go like this. And now all you see is the three functions. You don't see anything else. So if you translate your Python code, either just use an empty, a block like this or a block like this or a block like this, you don't have to make sense of the code. Just you want the commands. You want to know what the commands actually are. So start with blocks that look like this first. Do all these, then worry about these. But you gotta put these all these inside the puzzle piece like that to make them work. If you don't, they won't work. See that? Now we're gonna make it work on somewhere else just so you guys will know what I mean. Now see that right there? And now we'll put it in the start menu part. And when I found that out, I was like, no, I ain't not doing scratch. I am not going to have all kinds of stuff like this. I'll show you exactly what I mean. Now, I'm not going to sit there and look through piles and piles of code like this and move things around. There's no way I'm going to do that. And you got to grab the code at the bottom, too, to move it around. I can't seem to move it at the top here. Even though before it let me, it must be there. But I can't see me using scratch code. No, 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 no. So now I'm going to translate this and see what it looks like. This is the actual line follower for the robot. Now this stuff here, you don't need to put these global variables. If you're new to Python, you don't need to put these, but you do need the commands. You know, and if you have commands that belong in here, put them, put them back in here. But you don't need to have these as global variables, though. Just dissect the, the code that you got and you'll figure out how it works and what you don't need in it. So sometimes you'll, you'll take uh, scratch uh, program examples that you'll find on the internet and go, oh wow, look at these, what are these? These are just variables. These things allow uh, variables to work outside any functions. So that way if you're calling a variable outside a function, these guys here will know where it is and go get it. And vice versa. You can make verbals call inside a function too if you want. Well, they automatically will, but to make verbals call from a function, you need to do these, but you don't have to use these. But this is the idea of how you do it to translate all the Python, all the code, the scratch stuff back into Python. And that way you'll be well on your way to making nice little stuff with your robot. Uh, I should have did a video like this a while ago, but I never thought of it, and I should have. 
But this is how it's done. Now we're going to close out of this. I don't want to save anything. Okay. What you see here is my Python idle editor. Just an ordinary Python idle editor that you get from Python when you download Python. It's just the default uh, idle that they give you, which is perfectly fine for me. It does everything I need. It's actually, I think it's the best one, really. I don't care what pop-up windows and stuff. I like just what I got here. But what I had done as I translated every single robot uh, scratch code block command back into Python. And what I had done was I just made quick notes and comments on uh, what the commands sort of do. Not worried about what they do yet because I just wanted to put them in their categories of exactly what they do, uh, the groups of what they are, like tools, whatever that is, tools, timer, and you got your lead commands and stuff like that, like I showed you with the blocks. Now, like I showed you, once you translate them all, you don't got to worry about blocks anymore. All you got to worry about now is how you run these commands. These commands here are what make the LEDs run here, as you can see. Uh, this is just part of their commands here, and these are the values that you plug in on your own to make the different color, the, the combination of lights. I believe this one might be a, an amber or something color here, but this is not my color. This is their default of what it shows. I am just uh, left them at their default after I translated all this code. But as you can see, look how small this little tiny uh, drag bar is. And look at all these commands I had to translate. All these are all Python and Robomaster app codes. They're all, from, they're all for Python. They're all, they're all translated uh, blocks from, from code. From those block, from that block, that scratch block code, and this is how exactly how it's done. You just got to go through a whole entire scratch code menu, like I showed you on the far left of your Roll Master app, and you just got to take painstakingly take time and take all those commands and turn them all into Python code. But at the end of the day, you're gonna be so happy because you're gonna learn stuff from your robot that you can't find on the internet. It's hard to stuff find stuff like this on the internet. Usually you find the, the, the scratch code stuff, but now that I found out about the double-headed arrow, I never looked back and I turned all my Python commands, I mean Rule Master commands, back into Python commands. And these are the functions that I've been telling you about. The word pass here that you see here, you put that there if you don't want any code underneath that you're trying out for now. But if you don't put a pass command underneath any Python code, it'll give you an error and your program will unhappily stop. And you don't want that to happen. So that's what this word pass is. I just didn't mention it while I was showing you how to translate the functions. Well, in ordinary Python, if you're writing a command that has a little tiny semicolon that looks like a function or something like this, you're not sure what to type in. Just type in the word pass. It'll carry on to the next command without being seen by anything. It'll run like nothing happened. But if you don't use a pass command right here, you will get an error and your program will sadly stop, and you'll wonder why. So always use pass underneath the function if you don't know what you want to put in it yet. Okay, now we'll just move down a bit more. And just so you can see them all. These are all the functions I actually translated back into Python code. I just went through the whole entire list until I got, I got them all. And to tell you the truth, I don't know what, which ones were the ones that were circular or what. I totally forget now, but you'll find that as you go. You'll, 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 you'll take some blocks and you'll translate them into Python, and you'll find that you need those little cylinders, circulars, and square little blocks, things like inside those other blocks, things like that. You're going to find that out. But it's easy to do. You just take your favorite Python editor and store all the actual commands on there. Now... Python editor will not make RoboMaster run, or vice versa. This is just a holding cell. If I was to try and run this actual like this, if I try and run this, it'll give me an error right away. See that? There is no such thing as a robot control dot set. It is not in this Python shell. It, this Python shell does not understand RoboMaster code, but you can put it in there and save it and preserve it until you need it for RoboMaster. Or you teach it like a tool like I've been doing here. And now let's go right down to the bottom here. And I added these to myself here that 
all the stuff here that you can use as for making the robot do true and false and stuff like that. So I wanted to make sure I had that little note near the bottom in the wild true pass. Again, I used pass as this will just do nothing forever if I was to actually use that. It just run forever doing nothing. I don't even know if the loop would even work. Maybe it would, but it wouldn't do nothing. It would just keep telling until you push control C to stop it. But this is the actual for the uh, Robo Master or anything you want to do. These are just universal basic Python commands I used here. This is a for loop. You don't, have to, you don't have to type the word count either. You can use the word I. And you gotta use a variable though. You can use the word I. You can use the word count. You can use the word for dog in range count to 10, whatever. You, like the, this, anything purple like this in the Python command is a command. This is also a command. This is what you want to make for yourself as your own variable. This is part of the command for Python. This and pass is definitely one of Python's commands. If I type in gas instead of pass, you're going to get an error. So just remember that. Anything that looks uh, like an orange or red or purple or anything that you did in the actual customizations of your uh, of your uh, thing, configure the idle, whatever, anything you might have did in here will affect your layout colors. So my layout colors are are certain colors that I've used, but even though they're not highlighted here. Uh, maybe there's highlighted to show you as an example, but this is kind of the stuff the color scheme I've got going on here. You can change the color scheme if you want, but I, I like the I think I use the default. I just left it at that. It was just much easier to read. And I get out of here. Okay. Here's my YouTube channel, but the reason I'm showing you this, not because of my channel, but the community tab here, this can preserve Python code. This unfortunately is not to do with the RoboMaster, but I do have a Raspberry Pi, and this is one of the examples of preservable code that I placed into my YouTube community page, so other people like you or me or anybody you can take all this code, highlight it, highlight it all, make sure you got it all, go like this, make sure you got all the code, all of it, okay? We're going to go through, whoops, we don't want to go that far, we only want this. What you do, you push your control C to copy everything. You copy your code and you, this is totally preservable for Raspberry Pi, Python code that I'm using or even the RoboMaster. But I haven't got too much RoboMaster code on here yet. Uh, I'm going to start putting it here though, but I got all kinds of Python and everything else, mostly for the Raspberry Pi for now. But I do got all the uh, all the RoboMaster code that I need to put here. But uh, other than that, uh, YouTube community post can only hold so much text. So to be able to put the whole entire command sets of RoboMaster in here, it's going to take three or four, or maybe five uh, different kinds of posts for the command sets. I cannot put RoboMaster comes to life in here because anybody that's new to Python wouldn't know which tab they got to look into first on which post they got to get. So I'm not going to be putting that in here. Only things that can fit text length for any posts that you do in the community channel on YouTube. Okay, so this is what I'm using mine for. So if anybody does see my video, this latest video I'm talking about here, I'm going to be putting a whole bunch of Python stuff in here that is preservable totally. All you do is highlight it and it does it perfect. No indentations are needed or nothing. It doesn't cause an error of any kind. It's beautiful. And so this is what I've been doing. And what I'm also going to show you too is another way you don't have to write too much RoboMaster code down if you need an account though, is you can get on GitHub. Now we're going to go to GitHub, okay? We're going to go to GitHub from my little tab here. This is my profile page right here of GitHub. This here is my repositories. This here is where you want to go. You'll see this whole page like this, but this here is where you want to go. And then uh, you want to go looking for RoboMaster or anything you want to do, RoboMaster Python examples. This, we're going to go in here. 
Once you log into GitHub and you visit my page, you can go in here and find anything you want to do with RoboMaster, stuff I actually made and took a year or two to actually create this all for you guys and me and everybody uh, halfway around the world that can't get access to these robots uh, as for the commands and such. Now you can through me. And uh, the, 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 what you do is you simply go to, let's say we'll go to Clap Disco Lab. You just open the file and you can see the contents and then you can highlight it all. You can highlight this all and keep it. You cannot edit it because it's my stuff. You cannot go to the edit button like you see on my page here because you see my open my direct page. You will not see this. You might see forking and stuff to fork my files to your to your branches, whatever. But you cannot change my immediate code. You can change your own. Once you fork it, you just can't change mine, which is great about GitHub. And it's also totally preservable code. You can even download the file too if you don't want to copy it. But you have to log into GitHub to be able to use all this stuff. I'm pretty sure you have to do that. I've had to log in. So this is what GitHub is. Now we're going to go back to this back arrow. And we can see any more things about uh, RoboMaster. You know, I got random LEDs for the RoboMaster. You're going here. And then you can see all the random code for all the random examples for RoboMaster and how to make the LEDs work. You can highlight the code or you can download the whole entire file or fork the file to your own liking once you're on GitHub as, a, as an account. Uh, now you got, uh, you got my Rollmaster's examples in here somewhere. Rollmaster Python commands. We'll look at this one since we were looking at that. This is the commands. This is the entire command set that I was briefly showing you. That if you go to GitHub, you can get all this. And you can download it directly. And then you can keep it in your Python editor. And go through it to put it in your Robomaster app. And it stays totally preservable. It's totally, totally preservable. And it's indents and everything. If it's not errored here through me, it won't error through you at all. And I check all my commands to make sure they do work. I check everything three or four times to make sure my stuff works before I do give it away to people to learn from it. I don't want them to learn a bunch of contradiction. I want them to learn the truth of whatever it is they seek to do with this robot. And I have it all right here. Now we're going to go to Python program, I mean, RoboMaster Python program examples. And we'll just make sure we're there. That's commands. That's examples. This is another video I had done on RoboMaster Python program examples. This is the entire GitHub file here. Once again, you can fork the file. You can highlight, copy the file like I just showed you. We'll do it again. You can highlight, copy the whole entire command set. And just push your shift key if you want. And just motor it down like this. And just, just motor away. Just hold your shift and arrow key down. And just highlight away. And just remember where you got to stop. That's all. And your little, cur little cursor will go with you. But look at all this delicious Python example code. And you don't have to watch a YouTube video and copy it down by hand. If you, can, if you get on the GitHub and you got to log in, you got computer science at your fingertips, not just with Python, but you can find any programming language you want on here not to program it. You can find other developers that use that language to learn from them. Some people will show their files. Some people will not show their files. It all depends. I show all my files because I'm... I'm doing one as a backup research for me, and I don't mind teaching anybody else. I think knowledge should be free, and I, and I can't sell something that's not mine. Python is not my copyright, and I don't think I should sell something through it to be like suckering people into, oh, buy this set of Python and you, you can learn from me. I, I don't do that. I think knowledge should be a birthright given thing for free. I learned this for free by watching other people for free. So I got to do the same. If they do it for free, I got to do it for free. And it's the right thing to do. It makes the world a happier place. And knowledge is power. But this here is a long list of these commands. See that? You stop right here, okay? And you can also go here if you want. I do believe I can go like this. 
to make things even short cutter, take your cursor. If I can drop it off there, no. I can highlight this though. Highlight this a bit. Leave that there. Don't touch anything. Go right down or even take your drag bar. As long as you don't touch anything else, I should be able to go like this. Don't touch anything. I'm going to go right down to the bottom. Now see right here. I'm going to take this now. We're going to go like this. Push the shift key first. Then go like that. See how everything instantly highlights? So you can even do it that way too, which is quicker. I should have did that way, but at least I showed you all the ways you could do it. And if you, uh, if you go here and you're not sure what you did, let's say you go into one of my things and you uh, push this side by accident, you're going to see something that looks like this. This is just an updated version of what I pre-done, like versions I have done added to here, things I've modified. You don't want this. You don't worry about this. Just immediately go back with your back button and go and, and go out of here. Only look at the stuff on your left here. This stuff on your left is what you want. And I even got a README file in here too. This README file tells you what this is. Okay, I always have a README file and things. You don't have to download them. But if you want to take this whole entire code file, if you once you got GitHub, you can make yourself a GitHub dick. Uh, desktop docking downloader and you can download all this uh, repository all this and you can look through it or take one at a time like I just showed you but you have to log on to github um, but the, uh, this is it for now for here and I don't just have Roman master I got my uh, my uh, let's learn Python together you can learn basic Python from me too you don't just have to learn RoboMaster. I've got all kinds of Python you can learn. You know, you can look through uh, abstract Python examples and you can copy things down and see what things do. Some, some things I don't have very many comments for. Things are a little bit vague in the comments section for this. I have comments on important things that you might want to learn. But other than that, there, this is just abstract stuff here of the files I did. But everything works and it's actually kind of neat. I couldn't stop making it as you can see the little tiny cursor here. I just kind of went nuts on the stuff I started to make. And this is about three to four years of knowledge of Python since I started in 2017 on Christmas Day to be exact. And my best friend Brian got me a Cosmo and that got me back into Python or programming I say. Led me to Python, led me to getting into robotics, and led me to a Raspberry Pi. What next? <laughs> and speaking of Raspberry Pi, I even got things of that too. But I, this is all basic Python that you can go through. You, you know, you can look through color type examples to learn how to color text on your DOS, on the DOS shell. You can push just the file itself and you'll see a black screen with beautiful lettered text. But if you don't, if you run it from the DOS shell, it's going to look ugly. It'll still run, but it'll look ugly. And I got my little Fibonacci number sequence sequence going on here. You get all this stuff, this beautiful, delicious stuff, you can download for free and learn Python with me. And there you have it. Now we'll go back to the main section here. And we got my polished Raspberry Pi uh, 4 programs. And we got Roland Master, that's my username. Uh, let's take, that just takes you back to my file, to my first page, I believe. Yes, it does. My nice, beautiful shape I made. And all the contents I have, uh, what my uh, GitHub profile consists of. I have that all here and everything. And some beautiful uh, inspirational poetry. Things to keep you up when you feel like you're making too many mistakes in your programming. If you're new to programming, don't walk away from it. Just Get away from the trees for a while. It'll come to you. Sooner or later, the sparks will start to fly. And that concludes our lesson for today. Have a good day, all.